I want to tell you about Hunted. Um, so in Hunted, Caitlin is a telepath in a world where having any paranormal power at all is illegal. So she's on the run from government troopers uh, who can enslave her, they can torture her, they can kill her, you know, really bad stuff. And when she settles down in a town um, with her mom, she follows for a guy, Alex, and he's a normal, no paranormal powers at all. And that's pretty dangerous because, you know, he can turn her in. And she also stumbles on a group of uh, renegade paranormals who want to kill all the, normal, the normals because they've been oppressing them. So she has to decide, am I going to stay in hiding and protect myself, or am I going to try and protect the people around me? And I think I've wanted to write a paranormal <coughs> fantasy for, like, well, since I was a teen. I was, like, reading Lois Duncan books um, so much that the pages were becoming tattered and the books were falling apart. The paranormal fantasy helped me escape my life and helped me dream and hope and imagine what it would be like to have a power that, like, I didn't have. It makes me feel more powerful. And I wanted telepathy to tell myself, uh, well, to let myself know what my abusers were going to do before they did it and escape. And I don't have telepathy, but I wrote about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was my way of <coughs> But it's also a more serious book for me. Um, most of you probably know, like, I'm a ritual abuse survivor, so my parents are part of cults. And this book for me is an analogy of cults or cult-like groups that are oppressed. And it also deals with homophobia, racism. <coughs> So there's a lot in this book, but I tried to write it in a way that's uh, like a thriller, so it's adrenaline rush and, and entertaining, I hope. I think it is. Uh, I want to read you the first two pages, and hopefully it'll interest you. So this is chapter one. Mom's gaze flicks to, to the rear view mirror for the thousandth time, like she's afraid someone's tailing us. I don't know how she thinks she could tell in the dark or with her ability shut off, leaving her bl as blind and dull as a normal. There's no one there, I say, sharp like broken glass, as if I haven't been checking every few minutes myself, as if I haven't been reaching out around us for anything different, anything off. The truth is, I think she's right to be nervous. I can't feel anyone watching, can't even sense another pair close by, but they've been shadowing us too quickly lately, like they found a way to zero in on my talent. But only another para could do that. And I haven't sensed the metallic bitterness that comes from the government Paris, the Paris lights. Just before we ran, I got the sense that I knew one of the trackers, or that they knew me. That's never happened before. It's too big to think about. One of our own, hunting us, betraying us without even being forced to. I glanced at Mom. She's clenching the steering wheel so tightly it looks like she might wrench it off its hinges. I wish she'd swallow her anxiety, act like the parent the way she was before. Mom loosens her grip on the steering wheel, turns to look at me, her eyes bloodshot. You're sure no one's following us? Check again, will you, honey? We can't take any chances. I grit my teeth, biting back words. I've never gotten used to her asking me to do what she used to do on instinct. It's reversed our roles. Now I'm the parent and she's the child, needing protection. I hunch against the car door away from her and open up more to the people around us. Their voices tumble and roll over each other chaotically. Shouldn't have had that third donut. Can't do this. Will he be waiting up for me? I sift through them, feeling for power, for predatory instincts, for anyone focusing on us when we should just be two anonymous blips in a car. Nothing. I reach out farther, toward the people off the highway. Who does he think he is calling at three in the morning? Drank too much damn coffee. Then I reach past the stray thoughts, the people in their cars and beds. I reach for the strongest voices, the ones that vibrate at a higher frequency, the other paranormals. I sense a few hundred, maybe more, in the cluster of buildings we're heading toward, but they're fast asleep, their energies focused on dreaming. I do one more sweep, delving further, and that's when I feel it, the pinprick of attention where there should be none, someone watching us intently, hiding behind layers of others' thoughts. I draw my breath in so sharply my chest hurts. Mom glances at me, I force a smile. Try not to let my fear show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>